Open up the door, it's Dave! I just got home after being out for the day. And as I was driving home, I was thinking about charging my car. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what does it cost to charge my car when I'm at home? So I'm going to answer that question first. That's an easy one. The second question is a little more complicated. And that question is, is it cheaper to put gas in my wife's Toyota RAV4? Or is it cheaper to put electric in my Tesla? That's the question I'm going to set out to answer for you today. And to do that, we're going to head upstairs and pull out a calculator. Well, actually, we'll pull out a spreadsheet and we'll take a look at it and we'll see what's what. Let's get the charging started here and we'll head up to the office. I'm in my office now and I've got my computer with me and that makes it a little bit easier to do a little bit of the math for you. I'm going to take you through that in just a second. But let me first tell you about how much it takes to charge my car. I have about an 80 kilowatt hour battery in my car and my electric price is about 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Might be a little more, a little less, but it's right around 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So that means if I multiply the 15 cents times the 80 kilowatt hours, it costs me about $12 to charge my car all the way from when it's empty to all the way when it's full. I tend to keep it at about 75% and I tend to not go below 25%. So I'm really only putting about 50% in the car most of the time. So on average, the cost of charging my car at any point in time is about six bucks. That's it. And I charge it probably once a week, maybe twice a week. So I'm spending about $12 a week on charging on electric. That's it. My wife said to me recently, you said, you know, I don't notice a difference in you charging the car over what we're paying for electric. Our house is a two-story house. So we've got uh, two air conditioners and that means two air compressors, two air handlers, the whole unit there. So it does get really expensive to run the air conditioner, especially during the summertime. We also have a water heater in the house and that water heater definitely does eat up some of our electric bills. So between those things, that's most of our electric. So a couple of bucks a month, you know, basically $20 a month or so is not going to really make a difference in our electric bill. We're spending well over $200 a month. So the $20 is really negligible. We don't even really notice it. So when you think about charging a car, just keep that in mind. And now on with the show and the point of this, is it more expensive to charge my electric car than it is to take my gas powered car and use that? So what I've done is I've come up with a spreadsheet and what I'm going to do is compare the numbers. But what I want to do is find a unit of comparison that makes sense. So the unit of comparison I'm going to use is dollars per mile. So I'm going to have to do a little calculating to figure out if dollars per mile is more or less on the electric car. So let's get into that and get started with it. I'm going to show you some values. I put them in a spreadsheet and I'm going to go through it and show you how I'm doing the calculation and talk about it in a little bit of detail. I don't want you to kind of get that fuzzy look, you know, hey, you're doing math. What are you doing math for? I just want to try and explain how the comparison goes so we can actually compare sort of apples to apples in that sense to decide which one is more expensive. As I've said, the thing that's most important to me is this value, the cost per mile. That's what I really want to know. That's what's going to give me something meaningful. So I'm going to compare the electric version versus the gas version. So I'm going to start with the sort of standard. And when you look at uh, the literature on this, you kind of figure out that the um, battery size, the average battery size is about 40 kilowatt hours. Uh, the miles that you can drive on that 40 kilowatt hours is about 150 miles. But I'm making these editable so you can change them. And then your cost for electric is 15 cents. Now there's a calculation that comes into something they call MPGE. It's the equivalency, the miles per gallon equivalency that you can do for electric cars. It's sort of a fictitious number. It doesn't really make sense. But what they base it on is 33.7 kilowatt hours that you use for your car. And then you take the watt hours per mile. That's how many watts it uses per mile to make the car go. And you do a calculation, you can figure out what the equivalency is to MPG. And this is something that uh, they approved of in sort of the highway sense when they're talking about miles per gallon. They were trying to create some sort of an equivalency to say, hey, these electric cars get an equivalent number of miles per gallon of something over 100 at a peak efficiency. So it's sort of that idea. So then I do a calculation to figure out what one fill up would be. And a fill up being that time when you charge from empty to full. And then uh, I do the calculation to figure out what the cost per mile is. And all I'm doing is dividing up these numbers. There's no, nothing else going into this. I'm taking these numbers. It's a very simple calculation I'm doing to figure out what the cost per mile is based on the number of miles and the cost for electric. That's it. 
So for gas, I'm going to do the same kind of a thing. What's the cost per gallon? What's the tank size? What are the number of miles you can drive on that tank? That's calculated. What's the miles per gallon? That's variable. It changes from car to car. And then what is one fill up cost? That's just these two numbers, the cost per gallon, the tank size. And then what's the cost per mile? Again, just doing a simple calculation to figure out what the cost per mile is. So I can do that calculation and figure it out. For a standard car, just, just the generic car that would be the most standard thing, your tank size is about 15 uh, gallons. You may get a little bit more uh, mileage, maybe a little bit better miles per gallon, say maybe 30 miles per gallon on a car. Um, and you can maybe go 450 miles on that 15 gallon tank. And then your cost per mile is 10 cents. So, so now let's put in some other numbers that are closer to maybe the car that I'm driving. So I can kind of take a look at that and see what it looks like, the cars that I've got. So let's go back to my example here with uh, the, my electric price being 15 cents a kilowatt hour. The, the car that I've got is about an 80 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, the miles I can drive, the effective miles, not the actual miles, because they'll tell me it's 330, but it's closer to 280 miles that I can drive. So you can see that um, the way it cost me, like I said, it's about $12 to fill up completely. And the uh, cost per mile is about four cents a mile. Now, if I put in my wife's car, which is the, uh, the Toyota uh, RAV4, it's a, I got a 15 gallon tank. It gets about 25 miles to the gallon, um, which brings that down a little bit. And gas prices right now, I'm seeing them for about 310. There are a few places that are cheaper, but that's going to be about it. So we can see that here, the equivalency for my actual situation is I'm spending about 12 cents a mile for gas and about 4 cents a mile to use my electric. Now, if this changes, if I have to go out and I have to use superchargers all the time, so I'm spending about 50 cents, let's say, now it's 14 cents a mile for me. That would mean that gas is less expensive than electric. That's kind of wild, isn't it? If you're only stuck using like superchargers or other types of public charging at 50 cents a kilowatt hour, you're paying more for electric than you're paying for gas. Now, gas prices, of course, are variable. So is electric for that matter. But uh, the gas prices are always variable. So if I could get it down to $3 a gallon, I'm going to be spending about the same. If I can get it down to, let's say, two seventy-five, if I could get it for that price, I'd be spending a little bit less even. But if gas prices went up to say 350, now I'm spending the same amount. Well, all of that said, the reality is it's more complicated than you think. When you look at the numbers, you have to realize that while I have a home charging setup and I'm spending about 15 cents to charge my car, not everyone has a home charging setup. There are plenty of places that for practical reasons or something else, you can't charge your car that way. There may not be some sort of publicly available slow charging that's right there. Maybe you live in an apartment. Maybe you live in a place that doesn't have this sort of charging availability. Maybe you have to go to some other charging place where you're going to have to pay more, 50 or 60 cents a kilowatt hour. It's also possible that the only other options you have are to go to these high voltage chargers, like a supercharger or some other uh, charger that's a level three charger. In those cases, it's entirely possible that you're going to be spending more than 50 cents a kilowatt hour, and it's going to be a lot more expensive for you. Now, we have to remember, too, that cars have other costs associated with them. You have to change the oil. You have to do some other things with lubricating different parts. With the electric cars, you don't have to do that. It is simply the electricity. So you have to kind of compare that, but remember that the electric cars are more expensive right off the bat. So, on the whole, I would argue that electric cars are maybe not as good a value in terms of the money you can save on charging versus gas as you might think. In my case, it works out pretty well, but your mileage may vary. You may discover that this doesn't work for you, that you don't have that sort of ability to keep your price down. It just didn't work out. And that's kind of the problem here is it's really you have to look at your numbers and figure out whether it's cheaper for you because of the way you have to charge and where you're going to keep your car and those kinds of things, if it makes more sense. And I think that's the real problem right now. And it's kind of a variable amount, kind of like gas in a way but the availability of it makes it a little more challenging. I would argue that quite possibly you would pay more for electricity and charging your car than you would for actually putting gas in your car. But I would do the math yourself and figure out if this is something of value to you. And if you're living in a place where you can install your own home charger, great, it probably makes a lot of sense. But if you can't, you might want to consider other alternatives. What's your point, David?